this has got to be one of my weirder video ideas and I don't really know if it's going to work but I'm pretty sure I won't be able to tell until I'm actually doing it. So here I am doing that. Hi, my name is Sarah Freshly and welcome back to Freshly Read Books. So basically this all started because I love when people use creative ways to come up with their TBR for the month and decide what books they're going to read. Uh, personally, my favorites are the ones where they figure out what they're going to read as they're reading through. I think that that's really cool and entertaining to watch. And it is the 1st of December. So that means it's the start to advent calendars, if you're into advent calendars. Personally, I am. I usually do an advent calendar every year. My go-to is a tea advent calendar, but I thought that it could be kind of cool to have a way where an advent calendar chooses the books that I'm going to read. I didn't think that I could do that with tea, but I did think maybe I could do it with a puzzle. Well, actually 12 puzzles. So I got this puzzle advent calendar online and I'm going to be doing this throughout the days leading up to Christmas and trying my best to let the pictures that the puzzles create, let them tell me what book I'm gonna read. Does that make sense? Basically, I'm going to try to use the picture that the puzzle creates as much as possible to inspire the book that I'm going to then read. I've decided that the only connection that doesn't work would be that it's like a holiday picture in general because I do have a few holiday books that I'm hoping to read and make a video for and I don't want to make it that easy. I, I want to try to find something in the picture that can feasibly lead to a book to read. Ideally a book on my TBR uh, that I own either physically as an audiobook or as an ebook, but if not, then just any book that could kind of make sense. So, using the picture on the front, because I refuse to look at the back where the pictures of all of the puzzles are, I'm trying to be as surprised as possible, but I for sure have seen the front at this point, with the exception of where this square is. Rectangle, that's a rectangle. But there's a Christmas market in this one, and I believe one of the Christmas books I have has a Christmas market on the cover or is a part of it. So that would work. Anyways, so yeah, that's the goal. I hope it makes enough sense, which is why I kind of say I don't know if it's going to work until I'm actually doing it because I haven't looked at what the other puzzles are. I want it to be a surprise every time I put a puzzle together and then try to figure out a book that works for that. Also, unlike an advent calendar, I'm not going to space out the timing. I'm going to open the next one when I finish reading the book from the previous puzzle. Anyways, with all of that set up, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and do day one's puzzle. I'm so excited. <laughs> I've been waiting for this for so long. So it is still uh, December 1st and I, picked and read the book that I'd have based off of the puzzle. So the first puzzle that I put together was clearly a ski lodge and I was kicking myself because One by One by Ruth Ware would have been perfect for that puzzle, but I read it already. I did end up going with Alice Feeney's Rock, Paper, Scissors, mostly because of the cover of the book in general. It's very clearly in the mountains and is super snowy, so I figured that's about as close to a ski lodge as I'm going to get, although it was a lot more secluded in this book than it seemed to be in the puzzle. There's a lot of people there in the puzzle. Uh, anyways, <laughs> Rock, Paper, Scissors is about a married couple that goes to, like, on this trip to stay at this old renovated chapel. They're at like a rocky point in their marriage and they're thinking like this is basically their last shot to like fix things but then some creepy stuff starts happening and it's clear like right away that they're like keeping secrets from each other so you know that it's going to involve that. Uh, overall I had a pretty fun time reading this book. For the first half of it I wasn't super on board. Second half really enjoyed. Um, the twist, that's twist very fun, not expected. So I feel like a pretty good start. Really happy that I finished a book already. So I want to tonight quickly do the second puzzle and choose the book. And even though I won't be able to read much of it tonight, I at least want to have it for going to bed. So it's December. 
November 2nd and I have read through another book. That's a book a day so far. I know it's been two days, but still I'm, I'm taking this as a huge win. So this book was very clearly set in Paris. I would say that's the most distinct part about it. It's literally got the Eiffel Tower in the background, but I didn't have any books that were set in Paris, which I was kind of surprised about. I feel like, or like France at all. But I did have uh, one of the holiday romance books that I was hoping to get to this month in order to make a video about those it is set in, well, partially in New York, but also partially in a country that doesn't exist called Eldovia, which is a country that's supposedly in the Alps, part of which is in France. So I went with it. I figure I'm trying to read four of these genre of books and I've got like a few ideas for which ones I wanna read and uh, it'd be good to start now so that I could kind of space them out. So I ended up going with A Princess for Christmas by Jenny Holiday which is about a young woman going to New York. She's a princess from Eldovia, the country that definitely exists. So she goes to New York, she gives like the speech at the UN and she runs into this guy, Leo, because she needs a ride, he drives a cab and he takes her to some event or something, but they end up like talking and he offers to like be her driver while she's staying in New York. There was a lot more how do I put this delicately? Sex in this book than I was expecting, which, you know, wasn't what I was quite looking for in a holiday romance. I was expecting, like, you know, you watch like Hallmark movies or like Lifetime Christmas movies and they are very pure. <laughs> so I was quite surprised when decently early on it, things got heated. And it got to the point where it was kind of annoying because it was like no story progressions happening during that. And it would just be like these lulls in the plot. So I was like, okay, we're doing this again. The, the book was all right. I think that a large part of me getting through it really quickly was just knowing that I got to like pick a new book after this and do another puzzle. And this is just a fun challenge. So I was really riding off of that excitement rather than any want to actually read the book. Overall, it was kind of just all right. Uh, if you want to hear more of my thoughts on this, like I said, I'm reading these books in order to film another video that's going to go more in depth on these holiday books that I'm reading uh, in December. I'm assuming all in this video, hopefully, so that I don't have to like try to read outside of this video at the same time. And that one should be up by now, by the time that this video goes up. Uh, if it is, I will put a card here, here, I'm pretty sure here. And I'll also link it in the description if you'd like to see that. Anyways, on oh, to puzzle Christmas number three. Tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Been wondering just what you mean to me. Oh, Christmas tree. Okay, so it is December 4th and I have finished another book for the advent calendar. That's three books in. So the picture, like the puzzle for this one was, I'm pretty sure New York City, like it looks like a stylized version of Rockefeller Center with the skating rink, the large Christmas tree, and there's like taxi cabs and a pizza place. And so I was kind of like kicking myself actually because A Princess for Christmas would have been perfect for this one because like the male lead is a taxi cab driver and lives in New York. A lot of the story takes place in New York. They go ice skating at Rockefeller Center. So like that would have been perfect. But because I was thinking about that, I was like, wait, there's a second book in this series. The one that came out this year called Duke Actually. And looking at the synopsis, it was clear that this book also largely took place in New York City. So even though I was kind of burnt out by the first book, I ended up deciding to read the second book in that series or listen to, I listened to it again. Luckily, I did enjoy this one more than the first one. I, I'm still feeling a little like burnt out by the holiday romance books. It takes two books to get me burnt out on it, but I thought that it was good. I, I don't wanna spoil anything from the first book. So I'll just say that the second book involves two people that were in the first book. I feel like it's pretty clear by the end of the first one who those people are going to be. One is a baron who would become a duke of his country. And then the other is living in uh, New York City and she is a professor, I believe. This one I liked more because I felt like it was a lot more of a slow burn. It felt like both of the characters are being developed as their relationship was being developed. 
and that that spanned a long period of time. It felt more realistic, it felt more like something that I could find myself rooting for than the first book. Yeah, but overall I preferred this one to the first one and it is time to do the fourth puzzle, which fingers crossed is not going to be a puzzle that leads me to another holiday romance book. <laughs> So it is the 8th, the 7th, the 8th, oh it's the 8th, meaning that I'm technically right on schedule right now. So this puzzle was the Christmas market puzzle, which I actually have a large version of and an I had already put it together, the big version. It was really weird like pulling out this miniature puzzle and being like, wait, this is familiar to me. And it's because like days ago I had put together a large version of the same puzzle. And I knew like in my head, I was like, oh, these are like similar styles when I bought them, but I wasn't thinking they were literally the same. For this one, because it was a Christmas market and it seemed kind of like small townish maybe i don't know there's a lot of people there and like there's clearly like a festival thing going on but i went with a bit of like the small town-ness to it and unfortunately i couldn't think of another book that would fit or work with any part of it that wasn't a holiday romance i think i just like need to get a bit more creative with how i'm perceiving these puzzles so i ended up going for the holiday swap for this one which i thought was a queer book I thought that it was a lesbian romance and it's not <laughs> but this one was like a lot more fun I think and it did get very annoying because the characters did things that I was very annoyed at them for doing and choices that they made where I was like what what are you thinking but other than that it was fun and I liked how much of their regular lives and problems were interspersed with this story. It's basically two sisters that end up swapping places because one sister is like an LA baking celebrity, I guess. She like runs this competition show. It's basically the Great British Bake Off, but a little different. It's called Sweet and Salty. She's the sweet. And then her counterpart is the salty and he's the worst in the entire world. I hate him. Did very good job at writing a very annoying character. But she gets a concussion, but she's like needs to go through this show so that she can get the next show over Austin, the, the salty counterpart. But now she's got a concussion and so she shouldn't be doing that. So then she swaps places with her sister, her twin sister, who comes and like takes over for her because she knows she won't get it if she's just like gone. And the other sister is in like this small quaint town. And so they have like a family bakery that the other sister is running for the first time on her own while their parents are on like their first holiday in forever, a holidays and vacation, and are coming back like just in time for Christmas. She still has to do a lot because she still has to like run an entire business during its busiest time of year. So it's not like she's like taking a break while she's got a concussion. And then Cass is the one that goes to LA. Honestly, I don't know which one would be more terrifying. Although if I knew that Austin was going to be in the LA version and I knew enough about him, I would say, okay, put me in the bakery, busiest time of year, I'd rather do that. For this next puzzle, I, I'm i gonna try to get more creative with how I'm thinking about it so that I can pick a book that is not a Christmas romance book. December 9th and I have finished another one of the books. Okay so for this one our puzzle was it was another one that seemed like it was New York and so at first I was like am I gonna have to find another book set in New York and then I was like no you said you're gonna be creative <laughs> you can do this and so what I ended up doing is since this puzzle had like kind of a few different sections to it. Like there was an ice skating rink in the middle. There were like little scenes around that that I can't remember what they are. Some winter themed stuff, probably like somebody buying a Christmas tree or something. I thought that because it had that, I would pick a short story collection because it's kind of like the picture was a bunch of different pictures kind of painted together. But when I thought more about it, I was like, 
I gotta go with the Office of Historical Corrections. But it made the most sense to me because it was a novella and story. So it, there's one larger story that's called, or novella that's called the Office of Historical Corrections. And then there are several smaller short stories, which reminded me of the picture, how it had like one main picture of the ice skating rink and then a bunch of other ones around it. I'm really glad that I picked this one because, ugh, it was so good. I highly, especially if you like short story collections, this was so well done. Great like collection, just like overall like cohesive collection, which I think is something that is like underrated in short story collections, like when they can have that cohesion throughout but not feel like it's the same story retold or like it's just making the same point over and over. I felt like this was making different points all the way through. This is largely focused on historical events, but not necessarily like events, but the way people kind of react to history or try to rewrite it to make it more comfortable to swallow and about how that that's not doing anyone any favors because uh, other people don't have the luxury of feigning that ignorance. So this collection of short stories was largely about that. The novella itself was fantastic, but I do want to say um, I think my favorite one was Richard of York gave battle in vain. Also, why won't women just say what they want was really good. This book takes like tons of different perspectives. Some of the stories are about specific minorities, some of them, and not even about, about's like the wrong word. It's just like it exists and it's there in the story, but it's not like telling you, uh, it's not like spoon feeding you the information, but it's instead like putting you in the shoes of the person that or of a person that's directly involved and sometimes that's in a way that makes you empathetic towards that person and sometimes it's in a way that makes you uncomfortable because you don't want to be in that person's shoes you do not like that person <laughs> but yeah overall great book now i am on to my sixth puzzle yes i'm on to my sixth puzzle nearly halfway there my sister's here my cousins too my brothers flew in this afternoon all right Where december 10th and another book down i'm starting to hit a groove again which is fantastic so this puzzle was like a little pageant that was going on in a chapel or like people were coming to go to this pageant so I decided to go for a book that has some type of show in it which immediately made me think of uh, Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This one I actually have been meaning to read for a really long time now and if you've been a subscriber for like a year first thank you but second you might remember a video that I did which was judging thrillers based off of the first line of each of them. So I had basically four thrillers, read the first line of each without knowing what book it was from and tried to predict which books I would like the best. And this is a third book from that list that I finally read. But it was because of that video that I remembered that this book has a show in it or it has like a theatrical element to it, I'll say. It was even more pronounced than I realized. So this book starts with a staged performance of Shakespeare's King Lear. And there's a famous actor. He like dies on stage in the middle of the show and it's because there's this like flu outbreak there's a pandemic and this is very i mean there's a lot of this where it's like yeah those those phrasings like or like before the pandemic after the pandemic or like there's there's a lot of like phrases or things that are said that i'm like mm, i like said that yesterday but the pandemic in the book is a lot worse uh it's like a full-on post-apocalyptic world that that happens after this because so many people die from this flu but you kind of get two perspectives through this one is more in the midst of things happening but also like before and leading up to the start of the pandemic whereas the other perspective is 20 years into the future but sometimes you get like glimpses back at what happened like five years after the pandemic or 10 years after the pandemic. So I very much appreciated that style. And overall, just like I, I was surprised by how much 
of like a message there was to this book that I didn't really expect out of this book. All right, with that, we are officially halfway through this advent calendar. and see which ones I haven't opened yet. Is this eight? But anyways, uh, for this puzzle, I had one that was of like a skating rink in London. You clearly see like Big Ben in the background. So very obvious where it was set. And so I decided to go along those lines. So I ended up deciding to read The Test by Sylvain Nouvelle. I apologize for that pronunciation. I believe it's French because he's from Quebec in Canada. But anyways, uh, The Test, it's a very short book and it's about a test to become a citizen in England. And so like the whole premise is like the citizenship test, but there's something a little bit different about it. Nouvelle is a science fiction writer. He's also very well known for his trilogy, which I think uh, starts with the sleeping giants, but I'll put the covers of those books uh, up here so you can see the books I'm talking about, which I'm very interested in reading. Uh, and the test has been on my list for quite some time. So I was glad that I finally got to it. Overall, I really enjoyed this book. Uh, some parts of it were like super hard to read because it's very much like putting the main character in a psychologically really intense position that like nobody would want to be put in and it's a bit hard to read because of that but also it was a super quick read because I just wanted to know what was going to happen. Oh I didn't say what date it is. It's the 11th so I'm doing all right as far as uh, progress. I feel like for the last couple, I've been really hitting my stride as far as good books and books that I've been wanting to read for a while, which is really nice. And while the test wasn't on my physical TBR, like I didn't own it, it has been on my like unowned TBR for a very long time. So I was really happy to be able to get to that. And it did solidify that I would want to read more of his books, which is always a good thing. Okay, on to puzzle eight. same position but later in the day. So my next puzzle was actually the cover of the box. So it was like this picture right here. I knew it was Austria mostly because we've got our little Mozart statue here and I've actually been to Salzburg as well as to this castle in the background. I was very confused at first because I knew that this castle in real life is in Germany but this was clearly Austria, but I guess they're actually really close to the border. So this isn't taking too much artistic license, although I don't think you can see it from downtown Salzburg. Okay, the castle name, I'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce it. It starts with an N and it's very long. I'm gonna put it here and maybe like a little picture of me at that castle. So this was inspired by fairy tales by the guy that like had it built and uh, then it was later the inspiration behind Cinderella's castle. So it wasn't exactly built in the style of the current time. It was already inspired by fairy tales and then goes on to inspire a future fairy tale castle, which I think is funny. So because of that, I thought I should go with a fairy tale book, a book that's either based off of a fairy tale or is just a fairy tale. So after some thinking, I decided to do a book that once again, I don't physically own. It's not like on my physical TBR, but it is on my 100 books bucket list poster. And that is Lewis Carroll's uh, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. So in case you somehow don't know, this follows Alice who uh, winds up in kind of this insane world after following a rabbit down a rabbit hole into this wonderland where everything is crazy and weird and different. And she's like scared a lot of the time, but also she's kind of like, spunky a little bit but overall it was a cute fun listen i listened to it i didn't read it and it was uh, really like got into plays on words 
Like that was about 75% of the book was just like playing with words and taking certain things like super literally and then like taking away all meaning from other words. So it was just like a fun experience. I'm glad that I finally read it. Will I read Through the Looking Glass? I don't know. If you've read Through the Looking Glass, could you let me know if it's worth reading that as well? Anyways, that's another book done um, and another short one, so yay. I feel like when I record in the morning, it looks like I'm in some type of scary movie, <laughs> but that's just the lighting situation right now. So today is December 13th and uh, actually yesterday was when I finished the last book. I just did not like actually sit in front of the camera to talk about it. So this puzzle was I believe set in France, but I decided I wanted to be like a little bit more creative or like trying to figure out a different type of book that I could read besides just like a book that's set in France. And also I really, really needed to read the matzo ball because I needed to record my video that was going over uh, those holiday romance books. And that was like the only one that I definitely wanted to read during that video. The other ones were like, just any holiday romances will do. But I knew I was gonna read that, that one this month because it's our book club holiday book for this year. And I was like, you know what? Because <laughs> in the past, like the other puzzles, I was like, there is a lot of blue and white in the sky. And so like on past puzzles, I almost used that as being like, this is close enough to Hanukkah for uh, 12 Christmas puzzles. I feel like that's as close as I'm gonna get. But for this one, we had like a little decoration over one of the market stalls, this like blue and white ribbon thing. So I went with it <laughs> and I read the matzo ball. So the matzo ball is about uh, a woman named Rachel who is Jewish and her dad is a rabbi, I think. And she's like very like firmly in the Jewish community because her parents are very firmly in the Jewish community in New York, but also she really loves Christmas, but that's a secret. Nobody knows that. She, under a pen name, writes holiday, uh, writes Christmas romance novels. So then her publishing company wants her to write like a book that's a Hanukkah romance novel and she doesn't really want to do it because she doesn't think that like Hanukkah's got the same magic as Christmas does and everything. But then she sees that there's going to be this party of matzo ball that's being held in New York She's like, oh, you know what? That could inspire me to see like the magic in Hanukkah and how it can be like the version of Christmas that like we all know and associate with like basically the end of books and, and the end of movies and Christmas romance books and movies. So she like is trying to finagle her way into a ticket. Turns out the guy that's organizing the party is a guy that she knew in summer camp like from jewish summer camp a long time ago but they were like they would always like prank each other but also uh they were like kind of dating but also they were 12 years old and they still call each other their first love super weird but yeah that's that's all the general premise and that's how they like come together is like for this matzo ball party so with that it's time for me to get into the next puzzle puzzle number 10. just from like sitting right here but the reality is this is where I spend most of my life <laughs> like this is where I work this is where I edit this is where I play D&D &D. virtually it's it's where I do everything video games oh my gosh too much too much stuff happens in this chair so for puzzle 10 I had a I think it was London was the puzzle but the main thing that drew my attention was this guy driving a carriage and he had like a top hat and this like green pea coat, which is giving me very like Sherlock Holmes vibes. And so I was thinking, okay, what can I read that's similar to that? And then I thought, well, why not just go for Sherlock Holmes himself? So that's what I did. Now I've read all, I think at least, of the Sherlock Holmes stories, novels, etc. I know I've read all the novels. I'm pretty sure I've read all the stories, but there are a lot of them. I used to have like a collection, but lately I've been wanting to like reread and do it in order, like all of the Sherlock Holmes stories. 
So I thought this is a perfect time to get started and I went back and I listened to A Study in Scarlet, which I've read quite a few times before of the Sherlock Holmes stories. That's definitely the one that I've read the most. There's just something about like going through Watson meeting Holmes and them like starting their lives together basically. It was nice to listen to it this time. This was my first time listening to it as opposed to reading it. And Stephen Fry did the uh, audiobook, which I think is pretty recent actually, that that version of the audiobook. So it was really fun to reread slash listen to A Study in Scarlet and yeah just like go back through those early stages now there is like a portion of study in scarlet that i don't love because it's just like hey you know the super interesting fun mystery book that you came here to read how about for like way too long we spend our time hearing about an entirely different story with different characters that you don't know and you're like wait excuse me what and it's like surprise you're in utah now and you're like no no no, i should be in london take me back to baker street what am i doing in utah and i think every time i forget just how much of the book it is but maybe that's also because i feel like i typically skip a large portion of that section it just doesn't seem that important but anyways it was generally uh fun to listen to and i was glad that i revisited it it was very like nostalgic and just comfortable being in Oh, hi, me again. I always feel weird when I do like two updates uh, in the same day, but the next book ended up being super, super short. So that was very convenient for me. Puzzle 11 was, it was a Canada, it, it was like a skating rink in the wilderness, like a hockey game was going on and it's in Canada. And I, I do have two books that, like I have one book that's set in Canada. That's The Troop by Nick Cutter. Um, that I've been meaning to read for a while and is the last book that's a part of the same video that the Station Eleven that I read in this video is for. But it's a little lengthy and I'm starting to get like a little burnt out on reading because of this video and I don't want that to happen before I'm able to finish the books for this video. And then I also had another one that was a little bit shorter but also it was still like a little bit on the long side and I ended up going instead with a book that's not at all related to Canada. Um, not that that was like a requirement. I was supposed to get inspiration from these puzzles, but I think I didn't realize how clearly they would be like set in a certain place, each of them. So it almost feels wrong to be reading books that aren't set in those places. But actually I should be thinking about it in ways that like, it's nice that it's set in a place to give me a clear indication of like, you can use this to find the book that you wanna read from this puzzle, but you don't have to. And I think that's how I should be looking at it. So for this one, I ended up listening to a novella by, or short story, I don't know, it was only like an hour long, by Ruth Ware called Snowflakes. This takes place on some island somewhere. I think it's a part of the US, like the island is, but it's like a remote island that's like uninhabited. But it's in the wilderness and I felt like this puzzle was kind of in the wilderness. There was like little cabins and stuff like, yeah, obviously there's a lot of people there, so it's not exactly uninhabited, but whatever. And it's this family who lives out there and the dad is like really pushing the kids to basically prepare for what he's referring to as like the war that's coming and you don't really know a lot of information about like what's driving that or anything. And you kind of see things from uh, one of the daughter's perspectives. And overall, I thought that it was a really good for like how short it is. And I liked the message or lens that it gives you about the state of the world, I'll say. I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, this one definitely could be spoiled. And I think that the reveal is just so great that I don't want to take that away. So I'll just say that I did enjoy it and I would recommend listening to it. All right, it's time for the last puzzle. So it's quite a bit later since the last clip that I did. What day is it? 
It's the 18th now and this video is supposed to go up next week. So <laughs> it's about time that I sit down and film, which I haven't wanted to do because I feel a little bit ashamed that I DNF'd the last book. So the last puzzle that I had was one of uh, Moscow, of Christmas in Moscow. Very beautiful puzzle. Probably my favorite, but maybe it's just because that one stood out to me the most out of all of the puzzles. Like the other one seemed cute, but then I felt like I was just doing the same puzzle over and over. Whereas this one was very different. So there was a few different ways I think I could have gone with this one because there were like you know, things in the sky and ballerinas and, and things like that. But I decided just to go with the simple route of a book set in Moscow or in Russia in general. But I didn't have anything that like I actively wanted to read except for like classics that come from this poster that are entirely too long. Like I'm not gonna read War and Peace, you know what I mean? So I ended up just kind of looking around online for one that sounded interesting and I landed on a book called Snowdrops which was actually nominated for the 2011 Booker Prize. So I thought that that was kind of fitting because Booker is a large part of my channel and I thought that it could be nice to read a book that had been nominated years ago. But I just couldn't get into it and I was really trying and I think I mentioned in like the past clip or the one before that I am like bordering on a reading slum unfortunately because of this video. Like I had a lot of fun making this video and I, it got me to read a lot of books that I'd been meaning to read or had kind of like fallen out of my like immediate point of view. And so it was really nice to revisit that and really look at my TBR. So for, for those reasons, like this video has been so great. However, trying to read 12 books back to back, even with some of them being like novellas and things like that, it's been a lot. <laughs> so, and I've hardly read anything since DNFing this book. I tried to read another book and I ended up DNFing that as well. But just so you know, <laughs> Snowdrops is about a guy who is in Russia. He's not from Russia. You know from like the start of the book because it's one of those where like you see closer to the end and then you get like this flashback that goes through the beginning or like every the events leading up to that. So you know that like something bad happens or like he's in trouble for something but you don't know the actual thing itself or his involvement in it like how involved really was he and then you go back. So it's supposed to give you like this suspense I guess throughout the whole thing or this sense of like foreboding knowing that the main character is getting in trouble for something at some point but it just it really dragged for me the conversations particularly which usually I feel like is where books pick up but yeah it just I couldn't get into it. I made it halfway through this one and then I had to I had to just admit to myself that if I continued to push myself through it that I wouldn't want to read anything for a very long time. And I definitely want to be reading because Curtis and I are about to go on a trip to my parents to North Carolina for Christmas and I love reading while I'm there. There's something different about it. Maybe it's just because I can sit out on the porch looking at the Smoky Mountains while I'm reading, but I don't want to be in a reading slump for it. And if you want to see those pictures, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I typically post a few <laughs> Smoky Mountains pictures on my story while I'm there. But anyways, I'm sad to say that I'm like ending this video in a disappointment, but if I look at the grand scheme of things, I read 11 books that I had been meaning to read or that I had to read for another video that I did this month, that being the Holiday Romance video which is up at this point so if you'd like to see me talk more in depth like way too much in depth about the holiday swap a princess or christmas duke actually in the matzo ball then definitely check that video out but i hope that you enjoyed coming along with me and seeing me talk about books that i chose and read based off of this advent calendar and if you did enjoy it consider subscribing and i will see you in the next one bye